Hey everyone, Sergeant Ergerbert here, and today we are going to be reacting to The History of Russia, Part 2, by Epic History TV. This time I'm making sure my computer won't randomly die, <laughs> like mid-recording. In the last episode, we left off, I, th I think it was saying like Russia's an anarchy, and like bad stuff is happening in Russia right now. But they, they, they did some good. Um, talk about the Mongols. We talk about the Kievan Rus. Um, all that stuff. Poland, Lithuania. But without further ado, let's get started. Mmm, funky. In 1612, Russia was in a state of anarchy. They called it the Time of Troubles. Yeah, no kidding. Really, anarchy isn't good. The people were terrorized. Oh great, my cat wants to make it. Ized by war, famine, and plague. Up to a third of them perished. Foreign what? troops occupied Moscow, Smolensk, and Novgorod. Wow. But then... Is Novgorod a, like, prominent Russian city nowadays? Because I don't... You don't really hear about it. Like, all you hear about is Moscow and Kiev and Sebastopol and St. Petersburg. Oh my gosh, my cat is so annoying. Just one second. I haven't seen him in like two or three days, so he's crazy. Russia fought back. Mm. Prince Pozharsky and a merchant, Kuzma Minin, led the Russian militia to Moscow and threw out the Polish garrison. Since 2005, this event has been commemorated every 4th of November mm. as Russian National Unity Day. That's nice. The Romanovs. Heard of them before? Oh, the Romanov dynasty. Is that what that is? The Russian Assembly, the Zemsky Sabor, realized the country had to unite behind a new ruler and elected a 16 year old noble, Mikhail Romanov, as the next Tsar. Oh. His dynasty would rule Russia for the next 300 years. Dang. Tsar Mikhail exchanged territory for peace, winning Russia much needed breathing space. Yeah. What are you doing? His son, Tsar Alexei, implemented a new, new legal code, the Sabornoya Ulyzhenya. It turned all Russian peasants, 80% of the population, into serfs. Effectively slaves, their oh. status inherited by their children, and with no freedom to travel or choose their master. That's rude. It was a system that dominated Russian rural life for the next 200 years. Imagine living in Russia at that time, just you know, being a slave your whole life with no opportunity to get free. The head of the Russian Orthodox Church, Patriarch Nikon, imposed religious reforms that split the church between reformers and old believers. It's a schism that continues to this day. To, even to this day? Wow. Damn, this cat is like... <laughs> Ukrainian Cossacks, rebelling against the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, oh. recognized Tsar Alexei as overlord in exchange for his military support. It led to the Thirteen Years' War between Russia and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Russia emerged victorious, reclaiming Smolensk and taking control of eastern Ukraine. A revolt against Tsarist government, led by a renegade Cossack, Stenkarazin, brought anarchy to southern Russia. It was finally suppressed. Oh, no. 
Razin was brought to Moscow and executed by quartering. The sickly but highly educated Fyodor III passed many reforms. He abolished Mesnichestva, the system that had awarded government posts according to nobility rather than merit, and symbolically... That is great, like, usually countries that do that, or are like the first to do that, they end up becoming the most powerful for a while. Like, that's what, that's what, like, France and the Napoleonic Wars, they started um, to, to promote people based off of merit, and they end up becoming a very formidable military force. So yeah, it's always, it's always good, and it, you know, removes corruption. It's like... It's it's great. Can you stop? Ow! I don't even know what he's doing. Let me show you. Come on. Oh, oh he stopped. Yeah. He, he's weird. Who burned the ancient books of Bradham? But Fyodor died, aged like, just nineteen. Sister Sophia became princess regent, ruling on behalf of her younger brothers, the joint Tsars Ivan V and Peter I. After centuries of conflict, Russia and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth signed a Treaty of Eternal Peace. Eternal Peace? Russia then joined the Holy League in its war against the... Eternal Peace? But didn't they, like, go to war with... Poland, later on. The Ottoman Empire. Sophia's reign also saw the first treaty. Oh! Oh yeah, I, I remember Sophia is a, Sophia is a very prominent figure. Treaty between oh, Russia and China. Oh yeah, and that's remember the, like, Russia gives up, no, China gives up much of their land. Like, in uh, Manchuria. Establishing the frontier between the two states. Peter the Great! Yes, I know about him. That's, you know, where the name comes from, St. Petersburg. Yeah, I won't ruin the surprise for those of y'all who don't know. At age 17, Peter I seized power from his half-sister, Sophia. Peter became the first Russian ruler to travel abroad. He toured Europe with his grand embassy, seeking allies for Russia's war against Turkey, and learning the latest developments in science and shipbuilding. Yeah, like, um, once he did this, he really, like, admired the West and, like, Central Europe and what they were doing. So he sort of, like, tried to emulate what they were doing and, like, build navies and based off of what they're doing, just that kind of stuff, modernizing. The war against Turkey was successfully concluded by the Treaty of Constantinople. Russia. Yeah, and also there's a myth I want to get out of the way, that like, um, a lot of people seem to think that the Ottoman Empire, once it took over the Byzantine Empire, like, change the name from Constantinople to Istanbul, but that never happened until, like, much later. Um, that happened when... That happened, like, with the Young Turks and all of that, whenever they took control of the country, pretty much, and they renamed the city of Istanbul, and then they moved their capital to, um... Ankara? I forgot what it's called, but it's in, like, the center of Turkey. And I, It's just a myth that I want to get out of the way, because I think it's really annoying to have so many people like to say it. Russia gained Azov from Turkey's ally, Azov. the Crimean Khanate. Isn't that called Rostov now? Like, maybe that's a completely different city, but I'm pretty sure that's called Rostov now. And with it, a foothold on the Black Sea. Well, there you sort of do. Like, you look in the south, it seems that they have land in the Caucasus, which is good. Um, unless, like, I'm pretty sure there were countries to here in the Caucasus, so maybe they control that, and maybe maybe Russia doesn't control that land over there. Maybe like the Ottoman Empire does, I really don't know. I wish we would have clear borders, 
It doesn't seem to do that until, like, the later years of epic history. Um, but yeah. I, I, which is good, though. Like, it's better than getting the borders wrong, right? Than misleading people. Peter made many reforms, seeking to turn Russia into a modern European state. Yeah. He demanded Russian nobles dress and behave like Europeans. <laughs> what? Oh, I didn't know you did that. That's interesting. He made those who refused to shave pay a beard tax. A beard tax? I'm pretty sure people had, like, beards in, in Europe. Like, what? Why would there be people who refuse to shave? That's weird. No, my beautiful beard. I don't want to sh like, what? I don't get, I don't get that. Peter built the first Russian Navy, reformed the army and government. In the first Russian Navy? So you're really going to tell me that Russia didn't have a Navy back then? What? Peter built the first really? Russian Navy. That is very interesting. Now, they didn't have a Navy before Peter took power. That is actually really cool. Reformed the army and government and promoted industry, trade, and education. That's always good. In the Great Northern War, Russia, Poland, Lithuania, and Denmark took on the dominant power in the Baltic. Oh, yeah. Sweden. Oh, gosh. And this is whenever Sweden lost? <sighs> like, and, and it, it wasn't a world power anymore. Sweden, they actually did pretty good in the war. They, they took Moscow, possibly, maybe, and then, no, maybe they did, but they, maybe they tried, but they failed, so then they had to go all the way back south, and that about the Ottoman Empire, but the Ottoman Empire didn't want to help them, so he's pretty much screwed, the dude, the leader. Yeah, they did, they did a really great job. It almost reminds me of Napoleon in 1814, to be honest. It's quite fascinating. And that's whenever they take over um, St. Petersburg, or now known as St. Petersburg. I wonder if it was a prominent city back then, like before Russia even took control of it. I wonder if there was still a city there where St. Petersburg is now, and how populous, how many people there were. The war began badly for Russia, with a disastrous yeah. defeat to Charles XII of Sweden. Sweden, they had a really powerful army and navy, I think. Not, not navy, I don't know about that navy. But their um, army, they, a lot of them were veterans, and they had a great military system, so, yeah. At Narva. But Russia won a second Battle of Narva. Oh. Before crushing Charles XII. Right. Won a second. Well, that was like four years later. Look, 1700. Battle of Narva. 1704. In the exact same place, too. Before crushing Charles XII's army at the Battle of Poltava. Yeah, that's what I was saying whenever they went down south. I think the leader was actually, like, killed or something. On the Baltic coast, That's Peter Sweden. completed construction of a new capital, St. Petersburg. The building of what would become Russia's second largest city among coastal marshes was yeah, it still is today. It's quite a remarkable achievement, though it cost the lives of many thousands of serfs. Wow. Okay, so there was no city beforehand then. Yeah, that's interesting. And also, I wonder why St. Petersburg is on the capital of Russia now. Like, why it's Moscow. Like, that was... Yeah, I don't get it. Why did the Soviet Union change the capital from Leningrad or St. Petersburg or Petrograd, whatever you want to call it, to Moscow? The Great Northern War was ended with the Treaty of Neustadt. Russia's gains at Sweden's expense made it the new dominant Baltic power. Four years before his death, Peter was declared Peter the Great, father of his country, emperor of all the Russias. That is cool. That's kind of sucked though that it happened like four years before he actually died. Peter was succeeded by his wife, Catherine. Oh, Catherine, she's also a great leader. 
Actually, or not, she only lasted like two years. What about Catherine the Great? When is she gonna come? Then his grandson, Peter the Second, who died of smallpox, aged just four. Jeez, Catherine lasts two years. Peter lasts three Peter. years. Empress Anna Yanavna, daughter of Peter the Great's half brother Ivan the Fifth, was famed for her decadence and the influence of her German lover Ernst Biron. During Anna's reign, Peter Spering, a Danish explorer in Russian service, led the first expedition to chart the coast of Alaska. Oh. He also discovered the Aleutian Islands, and later gave his name to the sea that separates Russia and America. That's cool. After Anna's death, her infant grandnephew Ivan VI was deposed by Peter the Great's daughter, Elizabeth. Wow, oh, rude. It only lasted for like one year. Well, it's probably for the best, though. Look how tiny he is. Ivan VI spent his entire life in captivity. Until captivity? What? Until age 23, he was murdered by his guards during a failed rescue attempt. That's terrible. Elizabeth, meanwhile, was famed for her vanity, extravagance, and many young lovers. Oh. But she was also capable of decisive leadership. In alliance with France and Austria, Elizabeth led Russia into the Seven Years' War. Oh, yeah. Russia, come on. You can do against it. Frederick the Great of Prussia. The and then the funniest thing will happen. Russian army inflicted a crushing defeat on Frederick at the Battle of Kunersdorf, but failed to exploit its victory. Meanwhile, in St. Peter... Yeah, and you've got to respect the Prussians in that war. They were at war with, like, pretty much all their neighbors. Like, Sweden, um, Russia, Austria, I think several German states, and all sorts of countries. And they won. They won. And they held their ground. It's just amazing. Petersburg, the Winter Palace, was completed at vast expense. Wow, that looks cool. It would remain the monarch's official residence right up until the Russian Revolution oh. of 1917. Well, what is it now? Peter III was Peter the Great's grandson by his elder daughter Anna Petrovna, who yeah. died as a consequence of oh. childbirth. Raised in oh, Denmark, yes. Peter spoke yes. hardly any Russian, and greatly admired Russia's enemy, Frederick yes. the Great. <laughs> so he had Russia swap sides <laughs> in the Seven Years' War, <laughs> saving Frederick from almost certain defeat. Yes. Peter's actions angered many army officers. Yeah, no kidding. Like, the only concession, the only concession Peter wanted was like his weird, like, medal or something. From Russia. Yeah. And he'd always been despised by his German wife, Catherine. By his German wife, Catherine? But Prussia's German. So, you know, you'd think that would be... You know, you'd think that Catherine would like Prussia, too. Yeah, anyways. I'm pretty sure this is Catherine the Great, I wrote. All the kids like to talk about nowadays. Together, they deposed Peter III, who died a week later in suspicious circumstances. His wife, Catherine, became Empress of Russia. Hmm. Her reign would be remembered as one of Russia's most glorious. Epic History TV depends on... Wow, well, that's the episode. Multiple great rulers in like uh, the same 100 years. That is going to really propel Russia forward. So there can be a great power in the years to come. Tomorrow, we'll be reacting to History of Russia, part three. So yeah. Thank you all for watching and goodbye. Hello, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. 
and you know, turn on the notification bell thingy. And if you didn't, then make sure to leave a uh, thumbs down. Oh yeah, that would be greatly appreciated. And while you're at it, go ahead and watch my other videos. They're probably just as good, and if not, better than this one right now. Except for my oldest videos, don't watch those. And, you know, subscribe to these people down here, my fellow sergeants. They're other YouTubers that I either know or I have high in high regards. Yeah, even my cat agrees. So, thank you for watching, and have a great day.